It wouldn't have had anything whatsoever to do with the fact that you saw three black guys in a in a Maybach, right? Objection. No. What's the objection? I see. Day 23 of the Young Thug YSL RICO trial was interesting. Officer Fikes testifies to the 2017 traffic stop where Gun and Thug got caught with a firearm and drugs. Thug's lawyer does an incredible job on cross-examination, casting doubt on whose bag it was. He points out there was never any fingerprints found, and that the bag was in the back seat near a third person in the vehicle named Cedric Jones. Thug's lawyer Keith Adams snaps today, like always on cross. He's amazing. Hit subscribe. Here we go. First look at Thug today. He's got a yellow cardigan on of some type. He might be asleep right now, to be honest. <laughs> I can't tell. Uh, he knows that I'm not going to be asking him anything related to that stop. Specifically contraband found in the back of the Charger, the second second vehicle. Um, we did not say that uh, testimony in regards to the 2018 stop itself uh, was, was improper, was inappropriate. He, he, was, he was charged with speeding in that regard, um, but what the court specifically dealt with was whether or not the guns, the money, and the marijuana that were found in the second car uh, were was admissible evidence, was anything we could get into. And then court indicated that absent a, a further showing uh, of some nexus connection by the state, that we couldn't get into that. Well, I, I'm, I'm just saying that, that we're not improperly narrowing the scope of our inquiry. Officer Fikes was involved in that second stop. Officer Fikes had some conversation with um, Officer Gant. There's a period of time where Officer Fikes goes up to Officer Gant and specifically tells him to mute his body cam. Yeah, I remember that. He, 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 it's like a minute long. He says, are you on or are you hot? Yeah. The officer, anyway, um, that to us goes to the credibility of Officer um, officer Fikes. Yeah, they should be allowed to show the jury that. What the hell? The two officers just went up on the stand helping the state, but they can't point out that these officers are telling each other to turn off their shit. That's so sketchy. That definitely goes to the credibility of these two officers. It doesn't have anything to do, to do with the contraband. There's another portion of the, of the, the video where uh, Officer Fikes says to Officer uh, Gant, uh, the fact that Mr. Wynn's gonna be charged with speeding. And Officer Fikes tries to get Officer Gant to up the charges to reckless driving. He says, if you charge him with reckless driving, we can go in the car. To us, that goes to the credibility of Officer Fikes because it evidences an officer attempting to- I don't have to any disagreement saying those two. Right. So anything else? No, no, because I don't think that opens the door to right, well, <laughs> I was just about to say that. If you get in there, if you get in there or open the door as to anything else by your examination, um, I'll, I may change my ruling, okay? So, so that's just the caveat that in the most dangerous game, okay? No, I understand. Okay, all right. And, I, and I'm, I'm being very candid with the court and, and, I appreciate and them that. in terms of what I intend to get into. The thugs team wants to go into the body cam share of what these officers said on camera involving the two cars that got pulled over with thug and the first one and the other one had guns. But they don't want the state to be allowed to bring up the guns or the drugs found in the second vehicle because it has nothing to do with thug himself because it wasn't in his car. It is a thin line on what they could bring up because it could open the door to the drugs and guns in the car for the prosecution. His first interaction was literally walking up to that charger and seeing the firearms. And so the state's position is that Officer Fike's involvement was overwhelmingly involved with that Dodge Charger. That's why Officer Gant took the warrants out and handled primarily the Porsche. Initial uh, encounter was approaching the car and seeing these firearms. And that all is kind of part and parcel of Officer Fike's involvement. So the state is intentionally not trying to get anywhere close to opening or asking Fikes any questions about the 2018. If on cross-examination, he's asked questions about this stop, that there's any way to discuss that without on state's redirect, the fact and circumstances of how Fikes is involved, who he interacted with, what he saw. Questioning on Officer Fikes about a stop when he can't discuss the majority of his involvement and how he even got to that location, which was specifically to help Gant because Gant was gonna pull over the Porsche and Officer Fikes' initial role was he needed help because there was two cars in tandem. The, the state feels that either the 2018 stop should not be discussed it all should come in. There, there is not with the way that the facts and evidence are in this case and his involvement. If they're talking to him about something he did 30, 40 minutes into the stop, the jury's gonna have no awareness and it, I, the, it's fair to complete the story so the jury's not misinformed of how did Fikes even get to the scene? Why is he even here? So that DA actually is doing a good job of let's just show all of it. But the shit in that second car has nothing to do with Thug, bro. Like it's not in his car that he was in and driving. I think it's prejudicial towards Thug to bring up any of that. They shouldn't even bring up any of this. This traffic stop stupid. It was fucking speeding, dude. This is not an overt act in furtherance of a gang, bro. Not just talking about Jeffrey Williams' car, and he's trying to get the officer, officer Gant, to upgrade Jeffrey Williams' charges so they can search Jeffrey Williams. That's a totally separate issue, and I agree that that's, that goes to bias. He's talking to him about Mr. Williams when he asked him to mute his, his, uh, his, his body camera. He's talking to him about Mr. Williams when he asked him about upgrading charges. We're talking about Mr. Williams. We're not talking about it. doesn't matter why he's there. That's a good point. The officer was talking to another officer about upgrading Thug's charges to reckless driving. So they should be allowed to talk about this because it's pertaining to Thug. The guns and drugs in the other car technically isn't pertaining to Thug because it wasn't in his fucking car. I still agree that it's not really, it's not relevant. You, you're, uh, Your Honor, you agree with the state's position? No, I agree with the defense. You, this traffic stop is really important because it's one of the two times that Thug was actually accused of a real crime. It's up to the jury on whether or not it sticks and they actually believe this shit, basically. The information when he approaches Officer Gant is, is part and parcel of the firearm. So if he's crossed about, yes, Your Honor. We covered this yesterday. It doesn't have a nexus. Stop trying to get into it. I'm still not convinced. 
So he shouldn't testify about about why he was there. It's not relevant at this point in time because what it does is invites and opens the doors to the weapons. So I'm not gonna. You're not gonna do that at this time. Yes, Your Honor. Yeah, it's guns and drugs in a different car that he wasn't in. I mean, the judge is right here for once in his life. What they're trying to, to 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 assert is they're examining just on bias. Bias of the police officer trying to upgrade thugs' charges to be able to get into his car. That's what he literally says on body cam. I'm, it's, I'm still not convinced. Bro, I've been eating them snacks in jail, man. Shit crazy as hell. Now the jury's in the room and Officer Fikes is on the stand. Here we go. A gun with a toe tag on it. This is pertaining to the 2017 traffic stop with Gunna where they did actually have guns and drugs in the car. It could be a little confusing because Fikes was also involved in the 2018 traffic stop. The car behind Thug had the guns and not the one. The same officer was in two different incidents within a year. These are the bullets that came out of the FN57. These are the 9mm bullets that came out of the SEC Y firearm. The DA is just putting all the stuff they found in the 2017 car with Gun and Thug into evidence. Thug's lawyer keeps objecting, saying lack of foundation because he believes that, you know, the other dude, the third person in the car claimed all this. It's not really pertaining to Thug at all, but judge overrules it each time. This is the two bottles of promethazine. Fucking fire alarm went off in my apartment, dude. So annoying. By my handwriting on the front and uh, looking through the back, I can see the two bottles. And are those the two bottles that you recovered from the vehicle? Yes, sir. Any further objection? Okay. Any objection on last foundation? All right. Uh, I'm going to rule the objection. Overruled. Judge keeps allowing all this, which I, I understand. I mean, it was found in his car. His wallet and everything was in the red bag, too, with it. So definitely looks like it was his shit, even if one of his friends claimed it. Although Thug was in the passenger front seat. And the bag was in the back seat near someone. His lawyer's definitely going to be able to cast doubt on this in cross examination. These are the two medicine bottles I have. One's got Xanax in it, and one's got a uh, various pill bottles. From my handwriting on the front of the bag, and I can see them through the back of the bag. They're trying to say that he was selling all this. Let's be honest here. Was Thug selling drugs? Probably not. Not himself, at least. Uh, Multicolored pill from the uh, pill bottle. Uh, these are the rubber bands that came off of the large stack of currency. And uh, from my handwriting on the front, I can see them through the back of the bag. Yeah, those are the rubber bands that were on the money. Hold on, they're adding the rubber bands, but they can't add the money because Doug got the money back. So they're adding the rubber band that went around the money. They're shaking their head at that. Hold up. I can see them through the back of the bag. Yeah, those are the rubber bands that were on the money from the car. Yes. You're on the same move to be there. It's exhibit 728. Any objections, sir? No objections to the rubber bands. You're admitted, maybe publish as you see fit. Thank you, Ron. He said no objection to the rubber bands. Thug laughing at that shit too. Why are they adding rubber bands, bro? Like, come on. Here we go, Mr. Adams, Thug's lawyer. He's about to cook, bro. This guy cooks on cross sometimes, man. Here we go. I'd, I'd like to, the promethazine, the bottles and the guns and so forth. Uh, do you have the uh, fingerprint analysis that shows Mr. Williams' fingerprints on those that I can publish the jury? No, sir. No, sir. No? No fingerprints? No, sir. Uh, the object of any investigation, items of contraband are found to determine who the contraband belongs to, right? Is that true? Objection, Your Honor. Basis, compound question. I'll stay in this form. <laughs> when you do that investigation, you're trying to find things out. True? True. Right. When contraband is found and there are multiple, multiple people around that contraband, you, your investigation is trying to find out who it belongs to. True? True. Okay. And a lot of the questions you answered about the items that were found in the vehicle, you answered, well, this is, uh, for example, um, the item that was found in Mr. Williams' car. You remember? Objection, that? Your Honor. Basis. It's compound question. No, it's not overruled. Judge said, no, it's not overruled. This is an item that was found in Mr. Williams' car? Correct. You did not answer, this was an item that was found in a bag next to Cedric Jones. You never said that in the answer, did you? No, sir. Oh, the bag was next to Cedric Jones in the back seat. The items that you're referencing, the guns, the, 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 the money, all of that, were found in bags in the back of the car, right? Right. Cedric Jones was the person in the back of the car, right? Right. Cedric Jones was, in fact, closer to the items than anybody else in the car. True? That's not true. Is that true? No, the red and black bag was dead center of the car. Any of them had access to it. Cedric Jones is in the back seat of this Maybach, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. Cedric, the bag is in the middle of the back seat of the Maybach, right? On the floorboard. On the floorboard. And so your testimony to this jury is that Cedric Jones is not the one who was closest to that bag? Correct. I mean, he, he probably was closer because the people in the front have to like reach back awkwardly to grab you out the middle on the floor. But Cedric's definitely closer. It's like right next to his feet. You didn't say all the items that were closest and, and most accessible to Cedric Jones. You didn't have that I was asked if those were the items that were found in Jeffrey Williams' car, and I answered yes. All right, but in some of your answers, you specifically took it upon yourself to make sure you referenced that these are the items found in Mr. Williams' car. Isn't that true? Objection, Your Honor. Basis. Argumentative and inferring what the witness intended. Overruled. Okay, the judge overruling stuff today. Okay. 2017, when this incident occurred, right? Right. This is near the PDK, Peachtree the Cab Airport, right? Right. I, it's a private airport. I don't know who owns it. Private jet, uh, jets and planes land at that airport, right? Right. Private jets and planes take off from that airport. Right. Uh, any entertainers, sports figures, private individuals use that airport to come and go from. True? Objection, Your Honor. Basis. Speculating who comes out of that airport. I stand objection. Do you know whether or not this is an airport by, that's used by celebrities, sports figures, private individuals? Objection, Your Honor. Basis. Relevance? 
Uh, there's one main entrance to the airport. I don't know if the other ones are all limited access, like the one they first turned into. It's limited access, but it's an entrance to the airport, right? Right. And then there's another entrance, right? Right. So there's more than one entrance to the airport. True? True. They're in the right hand lane. I was in the left hand lane. Okay. Were you in front of them or were you behind them? I was beside them. I think what he's going for here is that this cop just profiled them. And you see them turn into where that blue arrow is, right? I see them turn into this entrance right here. Okay. So it was for tinted windows, I believe. Um, you notice this window tint, but you didn't blue light or pull the car over right away, right? No. You actually watched the car for a while, according to your testimony yesterday, right? Yes. Now, the, the truth is, though, that when you first saw the vehicle, right, and it went past you, you ran the tag right away, didn't you? Correct. That's the first thing that you did. This is common practice for me. Then after it was common practice, that's what you did. That's the first thing you did, right? Yes. Okay. By the time the car is going forward and turning into the uh, the airport, have you already gotten a hit back that it probably so. belongs to? Yes. Okay. Oh, so he's indicating that he pulled him over because he knew who was in it. The car wasn't committing any traffic violations, right? Not at that time, no. Okay. Other than the window tent. All right. They had just come out of, and, and, and you said earlier, you pull over uh, folks with window tent all the time, don't you? Correct. It, it wouldn't have had anything whatsoever to do with the fact that you saw three black guys in a, in a Maybach, right? Objection, Your Honor. What's the objection? That's the state objection. Your Honor, the, the state asked the question yesterday as to whether or not he knew the race of the individuals in the vehicle. Objection, you testified yesterday that you knocked on the rear quarter panel of the, the vehicle and the back window rolled down. The back passenger window rolled down. Right. But, but, it, but in fact, the, the front passenger window is the one to roll down first, right? No. No? No. The back passenger window rolled down first. You didn't put in your report that you wrote that the first window to go down was the front passenger window? I don't believe so. You need to refresh your memory? Sure. You got your report in front of you? Sure. Take a look at it. So I think he's just trying to catch him in a lie in front of the jury on what he wrote on his report versus what he said on the stand yesterday. Yeah, that's correct. The front passenger window rolled down. All right. And then you were on the passenger side, right? Right. So roll down. And then the other window was rolled down also, right? That's the way, right? Yes. Okay. He's an individual who was in the front. Passenger seat of the car, right? Right. And that's how he looked on that day, true? Yes. What does your shirt say? Fear of God. Fear of God. I said it yesterday. They should point out the shirt on cross, and they just did. You don't have any, at this point, any personal knowledge whatsoever about anything that's going on in the car or any of the contents of the car. True. True. Honestly, such a W that they were able to point out that shirt because the jury sees that now and they're like, oh, yeah, in 2017, he was wearing a shirt that says fear of God, even though that is a clothing brand. This shirt means he believes in God, right? Like, that's how I'm seeing it. Like, fear of God means he's a God fearing man. He used to describe religious people who try to obey the rules of their religion and to live in a way that is considered morally right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I just saw on Twitter that people are trying to say that means he doesn't believe in God. I was like, what? That means he does. Now the guns were found in a backpack. One of the backpacks in the backseat, right? There was one gun in each bag. Okay. You have the ability to send it off to either the crime lab or, or somewhere to, for example, have a check for fingerprints. You can do that. Yeah, but it's not common practice. Or just a stolen gun for us is not a common practice unless it's using a you know violent crime or something. As you sit here today, 20,024. 24. 20,024. <laughs> 20, you can't tell this jury. Did you have any knowledge whatsoever, any personal knowledge, any records, anything that tells you who handled those guns? No, like I said, it's not common practice to get that done unless you're using a violent crime. We're trying to tell this jury that there's information about who handled these guns. You don't have any of that information. No. In two bags, in a, respectively, in the backseat of a car, next to Cedric Jones. We know that. Right. So there was a prescription. One of the prescription bottles that was found in the car actually had a name on it, right? Right. Uh, Seems to indicate that it was prescribed to a person. At what point did you reach out to Mona Pillai? to find out if that was her prescription or what her prescription was doing in the back of that car. When did you do that? I didn't. He's doing a good job at casting doubt on who possessed the guns and whose prescription medicine it was in the car. Did you have any information about who handled the bottles based on any investigation you did, right? It's not needed because it's illegal to be in person. And if you don't have a prescription for that medication, it's illegal to be in possession of it. I'm not trained to, to figure out what's related to gang offenses. I haven't been in any gang training. Sir, but there's certain gang classes that you take. And if I can't present those, I've got no way of, of identifying a street gang for, a, for a gang charge, no. Right. You saw no facts. No evidence to indicate that there was any sort of gang connection to this case. True? Objection, Your Honor. Ask an answer. I stand the objection. So this witness is just a lady that works for a lab for the Atlanta Police Department and tests that they get. Make sure it's actually those and whatever. As far as you know, there's no other testing that was required of any of these or requested of any of these items that came to you, right? I have to answer your objection. Of the items that I tested, yes, they, they solely came to me. Just casting doubt on what they wanted her to test and everything. Trying to make it look like the investigation of the drugs was, you know, not complete or just not right or something in front of the jury. What you're able to tell this jury is that these items came to you and this is what they tested positive for in terms of what was what was in the, the items, right? Yes. Okay. And again, nothing in regards to, you can't tell the jury anything other than that, who they belong to, where they came from, anything like that. Correct. All right. This is a pretty routine expert witness to come up and just confirm in front of the jury that those were the drugs that they thought they were, pretty much. We asked about whether you were familiar with the uh, policies and procedures for the other divisions of uh, GBI Crime Lab. You said you, you don't know, right? Correct. But law enforcement officers know we have to send something if they want to analyze, right? Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. Same objection. So he keeps trying to point out that the officers pick and choose what they want to send to her and don't request certain things to be tested. Now he's about to cross-examine Officer Fikes. And, and just to be clear, I mean, you can take out warrants for whatever you think the evidence leads to, right? Whatever I can prove to the judge at the time I'm getting the warrants issued. There you go. And you have not since 2017. We're six plus years past that. You've not taken out any additional charges in regards to this incident. True? No. Before you came in here to testify, 
Uh, am I correct that you would have sat down with the DA's office and told them everything you know about this case? Prior to the testimony, yes. Yes. Did you tell them when you met with them that, hey, you all are free to do whatever you want to, but I didn't take out any gang charges? Did you tell them that? Or did they already know? No. But they, I mean, I didn't take out the gang charges and they already knew that. Um, and by the time I got to return back, there shortly later, they turned into that gated entrance. So I wanted to see where they were going because I didn't think that they knew where they were at. He thought they didn't know where they were at. Come on, bro. Any violation that we can stop a car for, but things that are out of the ordinary, like um, extremely dark window tint, or if a car makes a lane change, it had no reason to make it. I mean, it just. Odd behavior, odd driving manifestations. When you uh, when you ran the tag, um, it gave you a name, right? Right. Does it also give you the person's date of birth? It does. Give you a race? Uh, yes. So a computer check told you that you were behind the car that was registered to a black male by the name of uh, Jeffrey Williams, right? Right. Thank you, that's all. Trying to show the jury that this cop could have targeted them. Once he saw the name that came back on the license plate and the race and everything. They're essentially seeking to call Investigator Belknap repeatedly to ask him three questions. Times, I think three times. Well, it, and, and just to be clear, it, on behalf of Mr. Stillwell, I don't necessarily have a problem with them calling him as a fact witness. The issue I specifically have is with them calling him as an expert repeatedly. Um, if they are calling him as a, a fact witness tomorrow regarding something, some interactions he had with Mr. Williams, uh, Mr. Steele may have something to say about that. I do not. It's like a chorus. The state wants to keep calling this expert to sit in front of this jury, very close to this jury, and repeat their expert testimony as a tr with all his training and, and all his accolades again and again and again and again. And just, and there's a reason why chorus exists in a song. It's catchy, it sticks with you. And that's the, that's the repeated testimony that they wanna bring in again and again and again in front of this jury um, to repeat the same things. Mr. Stevens testified to what he testified to, but Detective Belknap already testified as an expert about what a B stands for and what red stands for and Rock Crew and where Rock Crew's from. So there's no need to retread that information and, and go over it again and again and again. It's Wouldn't they go to impeachment, potentially? Impeachment, no, Your Honor, I don't believe that it's proper to impeach a lay witness with expert testimony. It's already been said. Just you don't get to re-impeach people. He said, uh, Investigator Belknap said what he had to say as an expert. I honestly get what the defense lawyer is saying here. I mean, it is going to get a little repetitive. They're pulling a fast one to have him come in four more times and just repeat stuff pretty much with each witness that comes up. It's a little shady for sure. Doesn't surprise me this prosecutor's doing this. They've been doing shady stuff for this whole trial. Investigator Belknap does not get to testify five different times as an expert in Trontavia Stevens testify once. That's the problem with the chorus. Um, Your Honor, it's cumulative. It invades the province of the jury. It, it, it violates our client's due process, a right to a fair trial. And it also, quite frankly, Your Honor, it makes it very difficult to cross-examine an expert when there's no end to his testimony. We, I mean, you do have some ability to, 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 to know what you're gonna you know, potentially examine him on. Well, when you can repeatedly call the same witness to testify again and again and again about the same materials, there really is- yeah, but what, Okay, here, here and, I, and I hate to hijack you, but the state's given me a kind of a logical reason as to why they wanna call him these three times. Not that they, they're calling him for shucks and giggles. They're, they're calling him because of the way that they're trying to put on their case and the, and the, and the sequencing. So it makes sense in terms of that. It's not like, you know, they, where they're just kind of putting forth a way to kind of get him, you know, in front of the jury, as you call it, to, to sing the chorus over and over again. It's not that. They're trying to kind of, they're trying to kind of make it as simple and as plain as possible for people to understand. Oh, come on. They're trying to make it easier for the jury to understand. No, they're not, dude. They're trying to hammer it in their head over and over and over. To the extent that they call him as a fact witness, so your, your heartburn is you don't want him to be called as an, as, as an expert in the same breath. Absolutely. He's already testified yeah, but, as an but, expert. But the case law seems to indicate you can do that. I, I, mean, I, I, I Respectfully, Your Honor, I have not seen that case law. Those prosecutors came up and cited cases from 1990s that pretty much says that they can bring up the detective over and over. The idea that they have two cases that support their proposition that it's perfectly fine to recall experts again and again and again. My particular issue is recalling this. You said that 10 times. I understand so, that. Well, okay, I just, so what, well, right. well, they, they cited two cases, a Georgia case that had nothing to do with expert witnesses. Citing it for a proposition that was not an issue in the appeal so there's no there, this holding has nothing to do it is it's so he could be recalled and and, and, I, and I and at the end of the day i'm going to make that this i'm going to make that decision whether or not he's subject to being recalled he's he's properly subject to being recalled at this point in time and that's pretty much it for day 23 comment down below what you guys think about these traffic stop situations that was covered today mr adams always does amazing on cross like he's a really good lawyer so hit subscribe right now love you guys peace out